deep in the heart of the capital city. Live from the Graham Tire Studios at 44th and O, we switch on the blinding neon glow that bears their name. Jack Mitchell and Dave Miller. It's KLIN's Jack and Dave in the morning. 835 Jack and Dave in the morning on Lincoln's News and Talk 1400 KLIN. Time to talk tech, gadgets, social media, and the like. Jason Peterson from Turbine Digital in the house with us as he does a couple of times a month. Hello, Jason. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys hey, doing? We're good. We're uh, we're very good. We've got some beautiful weather coming our way. Yes, we do. We've got a lot of good topics here to get into, and so uh, I want to jump right into it. We're gonna, I want to get into this list of apps with a couple of news items here first that I want to kind of throw out here to the table and, and discuss a little bit. During Sunday's speech about terrorism, one of the things that, Dave, I don't know that we got to this yet, but he called, it seemed like, on tech companies to help America fight the Islamic State. Right. And um, it was, quote, I will urge high-tech and law enforcement leaders to make it harder for terrorists to use technology to escape from justice. Now, I don't know, I don't know exactly what that means. Is that something about encryption, do you think? Or what can these tech companies no. do to be a part of this? Not necessarily. If you watch what Trump and, and Hillary said yesterday, it's kind of scary. Because they said, um, well, we want to shut down parts of the Internet and not make them accessible anymore. And you're going to hear arguments like, what about our First Amendment rights? And we don't need to worry about that when it comes to safety. Uh, yes, we do need to worry about that. Just like you can't wholesale say we're going to hold Muslims from coming into this country, you can't wholesale say we're going to shut down the Internet for some and not for others. That's We live in a different time. That is not acceptable. No, that, that argument doesn't work. I agree with you. I mean, just the... We went through this already, I think, with that legislation of keeping the, the whatever the Internet open and some of the throttling of the bandwidth and all that stuff, and that didn't pass. So you're right. I mean, we have this challenge now where, um, you know, I, I've always felt, and we've talked about this, where a lot of these wars that are going to be fought are going to be fought using technology and just the interwoven interconnectedness now that we have as a, a global community. So it's very, very complicated. So you do. You have these tech companies now that, you know, have a footprint, have data. Um, in some cases, the data is just totally wide open, like we were talking about with Facebook and these profiles and LinkedIn and Instagram. I mean, you can data mine a bunch of stuff on these guys without even doing any sort of security audit. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I think it's it's I think they're trying to harken back to the 40s where the, the companies all got together and, you know, they rallied the troops and all, you know, Ford and all those guys manufactured tanks and stuff. Well. It, it isn't like they also that had now. Government, they, they had government <laughs> contracts, too. They were exactly. paying them to be on board. Exactly. I, I it isn't th- like that now. I think the government's frustrated because it is easier than ever for two people on opposite sides of the of the earth to communicate and have it leave yes. virtually no perceptible record of that conversation. Well, that there wasn't... is and there isn't. It, it depends on how it's stored, where it's stored, and who has access to it, and whether or not it's legal. But these things that aren't the WhatsApps of the world, the, even FaceTime, I mean... Well, and, and what? They were using the PS4 system the to, PS4. to communicate for uh, the There are so many of those options out there right now. I think there's some frustration by people who used to track this stuff 10 years ago in the different ways that they've got communi- to communicate now. Um, it, it goes beyond text. It goes beyond emails. It goes beyond phone calls. There are much easier ways to communicate where it doesn't leave the same trail uh, nearly like that. So I guess that's what I wondered if he was talking about, if he called for more options um, for those to be unencrypted so people could get a hold of it. But, well, uh, may- maybe he's saying do the electronic version of see something, say something. If you see something on a Facebook page or um, a Twitter feed or something like that that seems dangerous, out of place, whatever, that you should report that as well. Yeah. Well, uh, interesting stuff there. I did want to want to get you guys' thoughts on that. Uh, really shifting gears here for a second. Interesting piece of news that's just coming out uh, over the last 12 hours or so. Amazon Prime may, we'll see what you guys think. They've taken another big step in getting people to cut the cord. They announced yesterday a new option called the Streaming Partners Program. So Prime members who pay the annual fee, they can expand their choices. They can watch streaming videos from Showtime, Stars, A&E, AMC, and other providers. But they've got to pay on top of what they're already paying to get those. You can get them basically a la carte. And I, I, I wondered when something like this was going to happen. You guys think this is another? You think this is a big game for cord cutters, or does it just depend on the price point for this? Sort of, I, I think sort it's of the thing? price point. I mean, again, they, they already have a la carte options 
you know, for just, you know, compared to like a Netflix where we rent a movie for three ninety nine and four ninety nine for the HD version. So I think it's it's really about that where if the price point is good, you know, it's, you know, that a la carte versus a subscription fee. So I, I, it's the price for me is going to make the difference. Yeah, it's also <clears throat> the choices, too. I mean, an all-you-can-eat buffet, if you're allergic to avocados and it's all avocados, is not a good deal necessarily. So, I mean, these movie services are great, but when you get the news and sports channels, then you're really on to something. You're right. Then people are going to cut cords. But movie options, I've got movie options. I've got four different movie options right now. Bundling it on Amazon as opposed to Netflix doesn't make any difference if it's coming through a Roku, and you can get it anyway. It's the same way. I mean, it's the same thing. HBO to go, I don't know how many people that made uh, people cut the cord but well, that's people that want to you know jump on game of thrones or something right. like that but news and sports when that that's when that be goes when that's that's going to be cataclysmic nine dollars uh, a month if you want to add showtime basically which gives you the live streaming channel and then when shows are over they're available to to stream after the fact you know it might be do it to it might be worth it to get into uh homeland yeah i was gonna say homeland is a big maybe catch up on right? that yeah but but other than that i don't know that i would keep it for a long time yeah. And, I mean, and, and I always worry about these, too, when they have these movie channels that are available, like HBO to go or Showtime, are there parental permissions, too? Because my kids are on Netflix all the time, and I don't want them just, you know, getting into HBO and some of the weird stuff that they have programming. Right. So. Well, for Netflix, they do the, if each family member in our family has an account, so that's No, I nice. got that. But you do that through Amazon, let's say. Yeah. Because there's a lot of HBO the, stuff the Amazon there. Do, yeah, Amazon doesn't have that, or at right. least that I use it um, yet, but... We'll see. Uh, each channel is going to be offered a la carte. Uh, it's going to be, as I said, uh, Showtime and Stars, uh, AMC. And, and, you know, AMC, that's uh, that's Fargo, right? Is Fargo no, AMC? No, FX. FX is Fargo. AMC yeah. was Breaking Bad. Yes. And uh, The Walking Dead. And, and The Walking Dead. And, yeah. Uh, I mean, for some, that'll, it'll be a great deal. It depends on how you watch, I guess. But each of those will be uh, separately. Uh, $9 a piece for Showtime and Stars. Acorn TV. What's Acorn TV? $5 a month. Lifetime Movie Club, $4 a month. Well, there goes your $4. Smithsonian. Your wife's got to get that. $4 a month. Oh, the Christmas movies are killing me right now. <laughs> my wife loves those. You watch. You oh, those my gosh. We've got like 20 DVR'd in our DVR queue. Valerie Harper is going to have a very special Christmas <laughs> this year. That's what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's... it's uh, it's rough, but um, all right. Anyway, uh, I thought this was interesting, guys. I wanted to get your your responses to this. Mashable put out a list, and uh, I don't know if this was in honor of some kind of an anniversary or something, but they decided, um, with the iPhone having been unveiled in 2007, they put together a list of the top 100 iPhone apps of all time, and a lot of these cross over between uh, iPhone and Android as well. And so I... I wanted to get your take on this. They said the number one all-time app on the iPhone, Dave's going to hate this, Instagram. I don't hate it. I just think they're wrong. I understand it's very used right now, but I think groundbreaking-wise, I think Twitter is... is... Twitter was number four on the list. Yeah, I understand that. Twitter was number four. Where did Facebook land? Facebook was number three. Yeah, so, I mean... That's your universe right there. Yeah. And everybody's usage is going to determine who they think should be number one, don't you think, Jason? I would agree. Yeah, it's what, whatever ecosystem you play in the most is going to be yeah. the one you feel like is number one. But the the I guess the argument uh, essentially is that um, it, there's no app that's anywhere near as influential uh, as Instagram. They said its dominance is closely linked to the iPhone's popularity uh, because it was cl- exclusively on iPhone for the start. And maybe Apple owes something to it, to Instagram. For its popularity. You remember the big deal? You couldn't get it on Android at yep. first, and it was only really an Apple That's thing. That's true. I forgot about that. Uh, a few years back. Number two, by the way, Google Maps is uh, number two overall. And I get that. You guys use the Apple or the Google uh, mapping function when you when you do directions? Or do you ha- I, I don't know about you, Jason. I'm starting to use Google more and more. It seems to be more accurate Yeah, I've been the using Apple the stuff. Google, especially since it's gotten updated significantly. Yeah, it, it looks a lot better, and it, it, it's a lot more user-friendly. I don't know. The, totally I agree. haven't used enough of the two of them, but I get into the one. It depends whichever voice service I'm using because normally I'm saying directions to and I'm using voice services. And if I do it through Siri, it ends up with Apple. If I do it through the Google app, which, by the way, if you haven't tried it, is 100 times better than Siri in terms of uh, – It's really stepped up. It's, oh, it's That awesome. Google app for I voice. I love it. I use it all Isn't the it, time. I mean, am I, I'm not exaggerating. No, no, it's 100 it is, times it is. better than I, I literally, like, instead of going to a browser, I use the Google app. You, all, like, And it's amazing. You ask it a question, and it'll 
it'll answer it. No, and it's Siri, the, the text to speech technology we've said always. Has it's been shocking. Better. It's very, very good. I, I think that's almost the most impressive, um, impressive thing of the last two ish years is the advancement in text to speech. You know, yeah, I was, or speech to text. This is so text. weird. I was I was talking to my dad about this not that long ago, and I said, "Do you remember when we used to go into Disney World in the late seventies, early eighties, and we would go through?" the carousel of progress and we would go through spaceship earth and they showed us what it was going to be like in the future. Well, everything that they were doing then about what's going to be in the future right. is happening right now. They need to right. update those to be no 30 kidding. years from now because we're doing all that stuff. And my dad said, but what they never did and they never showed was text to text to whatever, or, or, or speech, speech to, to voice to, dictation. Yeah. yeah. Opening apps, whatever. Because it's really amazing. He uses it all the time and loves it. I, what do you guys think you br- – I mean, I I think I'm over 50% now that I use voice rather than typing on my phone. I bet I'm I'm about 50-50. I, I, I don't think I'm that high, but it depends. If I'm sitting down, that's fine. If I'm in a car, not so much. It, it's still right. hard to do. You almost have to pull over to do it. I, I love it, though. I agree. I do like I, it. I use it a high amount. Maybe well, not 50%, but definitely way up there. You know, though. I don't know what Android has for this, but Apple has the function now. If you're plugged in – if the if the phone is plugged in, you can just say, "Hey Siri," and so you can completely compose a text without even changing where your eye level is. Which I love. Which I'll do, like I'll do for my wife. I'll say, "Hey, uh, hey Siri, text text uh, my wife and uh, tell her, hey, I'm outside of your office or something like that," while, while I'm driving there. So that's nice uh, all the time. Which is great if it's plugged in. Yeah, I think it's got to be plugged in. The times in that I always that need that stuff is when I'm not plugged in. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. By the way, if you're wondering, uh, to complete the top ten, number five, the first game makes the list with Angry Birds. It was a great game. It There's no question. Game. And now they're Flappy coming, Bird was good, too. They're coming out with a movie for it, what, four years too late? Yeah, they, <laughs> I mean, nobody's going to go to this. Way to this not ca- capitalize quickly on that. Find My iPhone yes. is six. Oh, boy, I, mean, I use that. I've lost... You guys know that I've lost my stuff more times than I can count. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Number seven, and I've never used this. I'm not familiar with it. WeChat. Do you know anything no, about this? No, I don't. I would have to admit it. I know about it, but I never use it. No, I never did. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a messaging uh, thing. I suppose it's probably like, uh, what's the other big one that people use? Well, I'll probably get to it here. Number eight was Vine. Uh, number nine, YouTube. Number ten, Uber, uh, if you're wondering. With the top ten, so, WhatsApp was the one that I was thinking yes, WhatsApp, of. That's yep. that, I think that's you know Uber and WhatsApp are, are kind of the two apps that open up the idea of what our future is going to be. That there's going to be an app for everything and and your normal functions in your life, whether you're going to the laundromat or controlling the heat in your house. That there's going to be an app that controls things, and they really made that possible, which is great. So I think they should be high on the list. Should say, however, I've never used either one of them. And and there were two apps that didn't even make the list out of all 100, and I went through all of them. Did you? Paper by uh, 53 is a fantastic app, and I talk about it a lot, but I'm, I'm a graphics guy. Jason knows this. Yep. And, oh, yeah. But I'm it, right there with you. But it is a fantastic app. Well, That's it's the best drawing one, period. Yeah, period. Um, and the other one, um, oh, man, it just fell out of my head. I'll come up with it, but there was another one that didn't make the list. I'm like, why was that even not considered? That's weird. Some of, some of the other ones that uh, I don't know if they had the regular Google. Did they have the regular Google app on I here? Don't know. I, I still I, think that honestly, right now is the Google app now, but the Google app a year ago, not so much. Right? No, just the straight Google one that you use predominantly for voice. I think is is really one of the best, one of my most used ones at this point. Uh, so anyway, uh, there's a whole lot of them. You can get it. You can get the thing on Mashable. They've got a lot of. They've got a lot more games, actually, in the top yeah. 20. I was surprised to see that. I don't know if I've ever... Candy Crush, Cut the Rope, Words with Friends. I never got into Words with Friends. My wife was doing that for um, a long time. And then, uh, so there you go. Number 20, t- Tinder, which uh, obviously all three of us are very familiar with. Absolutely. So, I'm on it right now. <laughs> Look at her. Swipe left. Yep. <laughs> uh, all right, Jason. Uh, hey, good stuff, as always. We appreciate it. Let's, uh, we'll grab you here again in a, a couple weeks, perhaps. Let's see. Will uh, it be 16, 20, uh, No, we'll be off the air then. So uh, we'll, take a, uh, we'll, we'll take a little break here for a while. Have a great Christmas. If yeah, we don't see too, you guys. before then, sure. we'll get back with you at the beginning of the year, maybe do some tech predictions for uh, 2015, like uh, 2016, uh, as it were, and uh, have a good time with this. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. All you right. You betcha, guys. Thanks you so much. We'll Jason, be texting you. Jason Peterson. <laughs> Sounds good. Turbine Digital. 8.50, take a break. Jack and Dave in the morning. Lincoln's News and Talk, 1400 KLIN.